welcome everybody to the interagency briefing for energy resilience and emergency response. And with us, we have the, the famous Josh Dorfman, if I can get the thing to work right. Josh Dorfman, you're the COO of American Wire Group out of Chicago. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Glad that you decided to join. I'm Dave Lowe. I'm the Gov Brief host. And we want to welcome, we've got a whole bunch of folks that are interested in this. We're going to get into some serious details, way down to the wire sizes and all kind of crazy things like that. That'll help you. Uh, and Josh is like the super expert on that. So I'm going to leave that all to him because I don't understand any of it. But uh, especially folks from GSA, FEMA. A lot of folks from FEMA, VA, Army Corps of Engineers, of which you happen to have a BPA with, which is awesome. We're going to talk a little bit about your work in Puerto Rico with the Army Corps. And and folks from uh, uh, Bureau of Reclamation, I saw that, FAA and BOP, as well as the military and the Navy. I'm doing my uh, Navy suck-up uh, routine with my tie, also sucking up to Josh because he's from Georgetown. Ha-ha. <laughs> So we'll have that, but we appreciate you guys. HUD, we saw a bunch of folks from HUD as well. And um, and somebody from Federal Trade Commission, you'll have to explain that to me. But whatever the reason is for your need for resilience, we're glad that you're here. We, uh, we'll do some introductions. I'll, I'll let you know who Josh is and do some briefing controls as well as the initiatives and regulations that are coming down on you, either uh, for, through executive orders or through agencies. Some of the biggest issues that uh, that agencies are facing, especially as it revolves around energy resilience and emergency response. And we have a new term for everybody. It's called solutionizing your resilience. That's that's Josh, and we're, we're going to submit that to Webster, right, Josh? Absolutely. Hey, if Bootylicious can make it. Right. Solutionizing. <laughs> fit right in. <laughs> solutionizing should be on. Anyway. All right. There you go. So Q&A, we'll get to that. Talk about some recommended action steps, procurement options, and additional resources so that you can get things done the way that you want to. And just so you know, this event is not affiliated, endorsed by GSA or any other agencies, provided to you, the audience, for informational purposes only. And your participation in this very briefing is voluntary, and any engagement by you government personnel is not an indication or endorsement of a commitment to purchase from any vendor, including Josh. Uh, we're, this is all to help you get to where you want to go. Now we got that out of the way. You guys can talk to us without having any trouble. And with that, we're going to launch a poll. And the polls will happen various times here today. If I can get this open right here. So, boop. I am here today because... Did it go? Launch. There it is. There it is. I'm here today because I work with contracts that include power infrastructure. I'm responsible for building grid redundancy. I'm re and you can hit more than one, I think. I'm responsible for sustainability and alternative energy. Another great reason to be here. I'm responsible for emergency response and recovery, or my boss may become. Somebody's got to pick that. Somebody's got to pick that one. Um, so definitely let me know where you are in this in this whole food chain and 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 thing. And we have uh, we have we got 57 percent. Okay, 71 percent. Come on now, we can do it. We can do it. Another five, four, three, two, one, and boom. And here's where we have it. Josh Dorfman. We're going to show people where people are. A lot of folks are involved with contracts that include power infrastructure. That is music to your ears, I know, for multiple reasons. Sustainability. Uh, and then we had a couple people that said, uh, my boss made me come. We appreciate you joining us with that and letting us know where you are. A couple things about how this briefing works. We just figured out how the polls work, which is great because we want to know things uh, and we want to experience this with you. And if you like the way that Josh and I are dressed today, dressed to the nines, I would say, um, you can make us larger by drag. It could be on the top or the bottom, but you can make that larger. A lot of folks have done a lot of this virtualized uh, briefings now that didn't do it three months ago. So uh, but you can open up that panel as well on the right-hand side, and you can communicate with us. You can download the handouts that are there. There are three of them in there, which happen to include, uh, or three or four. There's three of these. We'll get you the, the other one that's missing. 13800, 13834 executive orders, and implementing a executive order 13834, as well as DOD installation, energy resilience, a presentation, great, great information that is made there for you by Ariel Castillo. 
And so you can download that and, and do that. You can also engage us by raising your hand or chatting us questions. And we love, love, love the questions. And if you dialed in on the phone, and there's several that are, and I know that there's a bunch of folks that are, if you want us to engage with you, do me a favor. Uh, we can unmute you, but do me a favor if you call, called in on the phone and you do press this and I can't see you because there's a bunch of folks that are here that I can't see. Um, so do, hit your audio pin number and that pin and it'll and it'll let us be able to communicate with you. But mute your phone if you would uh, so that we, we don't have anybody that comes in live. You can also email us at govsupport at buyawg.com and we will respond. Right, right Josh? We will respond. I promise. I promise. So this is so the next poll here that we have is I am involved in what? Specifying grid infrastructure requirements, emergency restoration and recovery for power or procurement of power products and services or other. It could be any one of those. So let us know where you are and what it is that, that you guys do so that we have an idea of how we can communicate later, right? Josh? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll make that work. So here we go. We'll give you. We'll give you another. We're gonna. We're gonna make sure we keep you rolling because we want to get you guys out of here by twenty of. Promise, promise. Another five, four, three, two. I promise it's painless. One, zero, and boom. Here we go. So we'll share that out. Sixty forty. Sixty percent do other things, and forty percent do power products and services. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you very much for that. And with that, I'm going to introduce you to the COO of AWG, which is Josh Dorfman. He's going to tell us how you, how'd you get started in this crazy world. I think it came from your folks. Yes. So thanks, Dave. So uh, American Wire Group is my family business. Uh, we are uh, a third generation um, uh, wire and cable blood uh, in the marketplace. Um, we manufacture and distribute our products uh, all around the world with our main distribution centers located in Pennsylvania and in California. We also, as our major hubs, and we have uh, 10 regional spokes around the country. So that gives us the ability to cover the United States anywhere between one and three days to our customers. Um, we also manage our own logistics service. So uh, not only do we handle all of the uh, distribution services, but we ensure that the product is delivered right up to the last mile. Um, our products are BAA, TAA, and FTA compliant. Um, and we pride ourselves in our technical expertise on our wire and cable and hardware grid infrastructure products. So as we're specifying for the power grid infrastructure, that would uh, fall under the scope of transmission, distribution, substation, uh, power grounding, control, uh, and some specialty applications as in uh, microgrid, uh, underground high voltage or EHV applications, uh, as well as renewable uh, energy such as solar and wind. Uh, we also service uh, all, all of the major utility customers and federal uh, agencies in support in the aftermath of emergency, um, including obviously the, the hurricane uh, restoration and recovery, as well as recently supporting some of the uh, field hospitals that were being constructed. So uh, when there is, uh, you know, uh, the need for fast acting solutions. Our company has always been uh, focused on serving our federal partners uh, effectively. Uh, we're a small business uh, and uh, as the bullet point there shows and the, the last comment we have is that we do have a BPA with the US Army Corps of Engineers uh, for uh, wire and cable and associated hardware products uh, in Puerto Rico um, and We'll be talking about that some more, I know, because you got some good good lessons learned, best practices from, from uh, dealing with with uh, several of the emergencies with, with FEMA, right? Absolutely. There's a, a little bit of a preview coming down later in our presentation. That's exactly right. With a little, little primer there. So with this, we're ta this, this is nothing new, right? Now, all the talk, talks about infrastructure improving um, resilience, that goes back 20 years, uh, back way back in dealing with back to 90, 1996 where you're talking about critical infrastructure protection of uh back signed in in July of 96 but all of these are are very relevant today we have we we also have 13834 which is the efficiency of federal operations 
uh, 13800 and strengthening cybersecurity of, of federal networks. But you find that embedded in that documentation also deals with, with um, any type of, of challenges that you have that have to do with the, the foundation of your infrastructure. So these are all relevant. Also, the, G, the GIO Inspector General Report, the IG was talking about performance challenges, maximizing performance and outcome-oriented performance measures. The cool thing about what happens, if you can say cool things of emergencies, you have the opportunity to be able to retool and up the game of when you're when you're putting in new infrastructure, especially when it comes to power. And you're going to be talking about this. And I know we're going to get down right into the weeds with the wires and all the technology with your wires, because you have some very inf interesting information that deals with when you're doing these upgrades. You want to make sure that you're meeting the the initiatives that are there. The other part is 13800 initiatives dealing with prolonged power outages. These this comes from. Um, from information that supplied from Department of Energy as well as is in man so prolong you want to avoid the prolonged power outages manage the consequences and shrink the gaps in in your asset capabilities this also has to do with your supply chain we learned a whole lot about our supply chain issues earlier this year with the with the PPE and things like that but it also happens in emergencies on a regular basis doesn't it Josh you have situations that happen where your supply chain comes is challenged by emergencies. Absolutely, yep. and uh, the ability for you know, uh, response in a timely and an efficient manner manner is really what uh, brings success out of these uh, very stressful situations. And and absolutely, and with that, every issue faces different things with their facilities or their infrastructure. Uh, tell us what's happening with you, because we have some ideas of what's happening because of the research that we've done, but we want to hear directly from you. Is it agents, aging infrastructure? I can't imagine every that everybody is going to click that, but meaning uh, redundancy, grid independence requirements, supply chain and emergency situations, or something else, please contact me because we want to know about both. And you can choose as many as you want in this, but there there is certain, oh, nope, I think you can only pick one on this one. But, you're, but a lot of folks have issues with, with aging infrastructure. We see that as well. So we'll let uh, everybody continue. We, you got about another six or seven seconds, seconds we'll give you. But what are, what are you hitting that are the biggest challenges that you have? Some folks with supply chain and emergency situations. Imagine that, Josh. Imagine that. So we give you another five, four, three, two. I promise it's not painful. And there we go. Boom. We got 63% this time. So there you go. It's 80, 80, 20, aging infrastructure and supply chain and emergency situations. Love it. Thank you very much. So we know that agency, that, that there are problems with that and grid independence is one of those. And whether it, when aging infrastructure is all part of that too. So tell it as we look at this, Josh. We look at generation, transmission, distribution, substation, off grid. All those things are rolled into grid independence. And a lot of folks were dealing with that supply chain, which is directly related to the availability of materials, especially when you're talking about emergency response, right? So we see that as it. And then we also know that the cost efficiency is directly tied to the supply chain because let me tell you something, even now, like we go to Costco, there's no sales on toilet paper or, or anything like that's paper products, right, Josh? <laughs> because the supply chain is still stressed. Can't figure that out after three months. But even so, we know that it is, it is availability of materials, especially when it comes to emergency response. So let's start talking about this a little bit. Oh, uh, you want to add on that on that slide, or are you ready to go? We can keep going. Next, I can add a point in, this, in here as well. So, when we talk about the supply chain and aging infrastructure, you know, uh, across the power segment, we're looking at kind of three different major components of the system. We're looking at the utility and the power generation infrastructure uh, demonstrated on the left. Down the middle, we're talking about the transmission, distribution, secondary distribution, and substation infrastructure, and then as well, uh, along with the the cable and the hardware uh, cable packages is also the associated hardware. So as it relates to the aging infrastructure, there are some legacy specifications that are out in the market that uh, you know we can help educate our clients. And uh, 
our federal partners to understand where the modernization of the materials comes uh, into some advantages that Dave was referring to previously, as well as understanding what are the best practices in supply chain management so that in the emergency uh, events, uh, everybody's properly prepared in advance. Um, so, you know, with that, the scope of uh, our capabilities really lies between anything uh, wiring cable and hardware related uh, for uh, the power grid at, at the distribution, transmission, and substation levels. So, and that includes the hardware packages on poles and all that stuff is what you guys concentrate on, which is, is some of the biggest problems that you have when you have, especially emergencies, right? We'll talk about emergencies in a minute. And when you have a problem, this was fascinating to me, and, and I am no, by no means have any expertise in how wire works, but I was fascinated by the number of combinations, just different metals and different, I mean, tell us, tell us how this works. Right. So, you know, if, if you look across the different classes of wire and cable products from the low, medium and high voltage application, uh, you have a lot of d different choices that are relevant to the design, whether it be the metal, your conductor sizing, your insulation types, your shielding, your jacketing, your standards that are required. Where is it going to get installed? Uh, who are, what, are the regulated, what are the regulating entities in the area to make sure that the materials are following the local requirements? And then uh, as it follows into your timer high, the higher horizon, when do you need it now? Uh, is it an emergency? Is it a planned product? Uh, can you wait for it a little bit? Or is it, this is something that's a, you know, a major project that you can wait for? So as kind of looking down the, the scope, there's almost 31,000 potential combinations of wire and cable choices uh, and what you're trying to do is find the needle in the haystack. So how do you navigate that in the right way? And uh, that's really where the, the discussion comes into today of how we, uh, my company can help uh, our federal partners understand um, how to do that. Uh, and th thank you for the next slide because that really ties in well into our new Merriam-Webster word that we've invented called <laughs> solution. So in the, in, in the scope of all those combinations, what we're trying to offer and help determine for our partners is uh, how do you maximize your options to find the quickest delivery at the lowest price? And with that, you are able to solutionize your resilience. Uh, and under that, under that concept of solutionizing, there are really two main uh, levers that you can pull being your modern versus legacy specifications and the interchangeability and availability of materials in those choices. Um, so let's start with modern versus legacy. This is a great example. So uh, on the top right, you'll see two different types of underground distribution cable, sometimes called URD. Um, and uh, you'll see that they look pretty much the same, except one has a, a brown middle layer and another one has a white middle layer. And what we're looking at between these two are the different types of insulation where the brown is called the EPR, which is a rubber-based material, and the white, which is the newer and more contemporary design, which is called the tree retardant crosslink polyethylene. These are both insulating materials which you can use on underground uh, distribution networks from 5,000 volts up to 46,000 volts. And um, there are some important differences to know about this. So the legacy design being the uh, item A, which is the EPR, is a, is a little bit more flexible, but it has very high dielectric loss, which means it's not efficient to transmit power. It's also an older technology. And as the uh, evolution of polymer science evolved in the wire and cable technology, we've all there, the industry has adopted a new type of compound that has really uh, liberalized distribution networks called TRXLPE or tree retardant crosslink polyethylene. And the- That is a crazy term. I have no idea <laughs> how you can even say that. I, there's no way I could say that. Go ahead. It's a tree retardant cross-linked polyethylene. Is that how you say that? That is correct. And the, the tree retardant is referring to an electrical crack that would occur in, a, in the insulating compound. So it actually fans out inside the conductor like a, like a tree. But with this TR additive package, that phenomenon is uh, markedly reduced. Okay. Uh, I trust you on that. <laughs> thank you. So um, in, in understanding the, the modern versus legacy choices, where if you have a power cable specification that defines uh, EPR, that may not be the best choice for your system. And uh, if you go to the next slide, we'll kind of zoom in on our 
uh, dielectric loss of the uh, losses for the insulation materials means you know how much of the energy which you're transmitting is lost as heat. And if we look at the comparison of two common types of uh, EPR and uh, versus TRXLPE, this was a study completed by Dow um, that showed that the uh, EPR as a dollar value analysis uh, was is six times uh, greater loss of potential revenue or distribution of the power as related to TRXLPE. And that really comes back to the, sure. I'm just going to say that this really gets to the efficiencies and when you're when you're doing your upgrades, whether it's because of an emergency or not, certainly if it's an emergency, you want to make sure that you're you're maximizing new technology. That's what what all the mandates are all about anyway, right? Absolutely. And where uh, EPR is you know a fine compound for insulating voltage, uh, TRX LPE is really the modern choice for power grids everywhere. Excellent. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, understanding the uh, the modern versus legacy option is just, just an example um, where uh, the kind of the next choice about solutionizing your, your options uh, really discusses interchangeability and availability. And- Whoa, a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> just tell two stories. Um, I promise I'm not gonna read the slides. I'll just <laughs> the highlights, um, but, uh, a great example was that in the event of uh, in 2012 when Superstorm Sandy was prepping to hit the Northeast, uh, my company was called on the Friday before that Sunday when Sandy was uh, priming to uh, hit the, the country. And what happened was the utilities were looking for advanced stock to make sure that their um, systems could get back uh, up and running as fast as possible. And where uh, my company and my staff uh, is an amazing group of people. We started working on Friday night, shipping out trucks, delivering Saturday, delivering Sunday before the storm, so that all the utilities across the Northeast from Maine down to the Carolinas were prepared uh, and had the materials on hand. And that was able to uh, bring the recovery time down significantly for those utilities that worked with us. And so kind of with that, the conclusion is that our availability, availability of materials brings resilience to the energy grids. And in a similar story, uh, more recently, as Hurricane Dorian was approaching the Gulf, uh, a lot of those secondary overhead distribution cables, which we'll talk about in the next slide, um, were approximately 200,000 feet of this material was being required by one of our clients. And while we had the exact specification that they were looking for, we also had a near alternate that met all of the functional requirements. So in preparation of that, we worked with the engineering of that utility to dis to demonstrate how the products are interchangeable, and they were able to understand our value bringing to the table. And instead of having to wait months for their exact uh, customized specification to be available, we were able to work with them using what we have in stock, and the cables were delivered the next day. That's and beautiful. with that, with that, that really un brings the thought of interchangeability and flexibility helps also bring resilience. And those are the two messages that we were really wanting to drive home today about understanding and solutionizing uh, in the event of emergency so that you can be resilient and respond effectively. I love the word, man. Solutionizing. Love it. A, a quick couple of uh, points. So some of you folks that are familiar with the power grid may know this, but a lot of the wiring cable products on the infrastructure side have code names. So your bear conductors like bare aluminum, they're all flowers. Uh, birds are for ACSR, a very common item as it, of a ACSR, which is, you'll hear Drake. Um, there's a triple AC conductor, which are used in uh, coastal areas that to help avoid corrosion. Those are all cities. And in the story of uh, Hurricane Dorian, we were working on the secondary service drop cables and all of those uh, three phase conductors are shellfish. And- Shellfish? What? Did absolutely. you make, Did no, you make no this up? Either. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make this up? This was, I wish I was that smart, but this was designed uh, by the Aluminum Association eons before me. Wow. I had no idea that we had things that were named after shellfish and, right. and, and all, and, and, and dogs. What was it? Did you like? Yeah. Dogs, shellfish, horses, cities, birds, flowers. You know, it makes it a little bit more friendly for uh, folks to say uh, instead of a, 
uh, one aught three conductor with a full size double AC neutral messenger. If you can just save Papura, everybody knows what's up. Okay, good. That, now everybody knows that I have no idea what in the world all this the wiring thing is and why jo Josh is here because he gets all this stuff and can pull it all together. <laughs> I mean, if I go to a restaurant and I see a clam on the menu, in my mind, I think about a number two triplex when everyone else in the world thinks about, you know, do I get them steamed or do I get them boiled? That is right. They're, that's right. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to take you off track, but I'm always fascinated by how these things happen. So, and so. just to, to close the point about interchangeability, this is just an example of the, some of the analysis that we were able to support the client. So where they were looking for a conductor, the three conductor one aught with a bare neutral messenger that meet, that could serve 200 amps, uh, and they wanted Purpura, well, what we said, look, we have that as well. But also, if you're looking for that same target, we have this other item called Neratina. It'll work in the same application. And that really drives home the point of uh, interchangeability for the application. I love it. And this is just one of your places, I think, right? That That's staged and ready to go, right? So yeah, this is just a, a quick look. And this is you know, to understand the point about supply chain, as we were talking about before. Um, between our distribution centers, we carry the full range of transmission distribution, substation and, and associated hardware products. Um, as I talked about as previously as well, we also manage our own uh, freight company. So we're ensuring that the uh, last mile of that delivery is covered directly all within you know, one organization's uh, skill set and, and competitive advantage. And uh, the bottom right photo is you know, our service center where we're able to customize uh, based on what the client's requirements may be um, in, a, in a rapid fashion. And so, you know, that really brings home the, the story of emergency response. So as uh, your agencies are looking for support on the uh, power generation side, the transmission distribution or substation applications, as well as the pole line hardware, um, that is really how the BPA for us uh, with the U.S. Army Corps evolved in the sense that first we were, uh, in the aftermath of Maria, we were asked to support the wire and cable requirements. And as the Army Corps, um, saw our capabilities uh, and was pleased with them, they said, well, AWG, you've done a great job with, you know, item A. Can you help us with all of the associated... It happens all the time. That's when, If you can do one thing right, they'll. The, everybody's looking for answers and they're looking for solutions, especially in emergencies, right? So if you can, if you can, if you can fill that void, it is a big, it's a big deal. And there's I can't think of anything maybe besides water that is more important than getting the power restored as humanly, as fast as humanly possible. Right. I mean, the, the electric grid impacts everybody every day of their life. Uh, and, you know, our, uh, that's built into the, the core values of our company. I love it. Love it. Well, thanks for that. And here, speaking of, of uh, core values and electric grids, what, when do you expect, I expect a, a power grid wiring requirement, any kind of upgrade, when do you expect those things to happen? If you're, uh, if you're working in this world, let us know where, where you are, because uh, we have, we'll make sure that uh, you get what you need when you need them. It could be immediately. We're almost in Q4 2020. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh, it is insane. I cannot believe that we're almost in Q4. Uh, oh my goodness. So, uh, but it could be 2020, 2021, or 2022, let us know, because uh, we'll make sure that you get, uh, get what you need for the specification. I think what's important about that, Josh, is your ability to be able to help people beforehand, before anything gets out of hand. So, um, so there you go. So we're gonna give you guys another five, four, three, two, one, Boom. So we have, this This is where we are. We're 50-50, right on the nose, uh, 2022 or not sure. So we'll... And for those who say that they're looking down the line for the uh, 2022 uh, and not sure, if there's, you know, any support that we could provide in just saying, here's what the best practices are so that you guys can get a head start in maximizing uh, your availability of materials. Uh, we'd love to, you know, share our advice and guidance on how that would go forward. And how much does that cost, Josh? No charge. No charge. My favorite. My favorite four-letter word is free. <laughs> so there you go. Questions, questions. We got a couple here. 
Uh, you mentioned supply chain issues early, how, earlier. How do you address availability and deliverability in emergency situations? Great question. Um, so the availability and the deliverability of the materials, you know, that's uh, why we have uh, our own freight company is that we then are able to control uh, the supply chain as well as the logistics uh, through uh, th that requirement. Um, in certain situations, we've always requested uh, specific letters that get our trucks into the disaster affected areas. That gives uh, the drivers and the truckers the safety and the confidence, and then the customer uh, the understanding of where the products are coming and going to. Excellent. Yep, absolutely. All right. Um, and if you want to, you can raise your hand or you can chat your questions in the question panel down there. Just answer, open the questions up, and we'll make sure we get to yours. Uh, here's another one Do you install? I know the answer, but I'm going to let you do it. Uh, we don't do not install. Um, we uh, just uh, provide the products and we will be happy to uh, support any installation questions uh, as appropriate, but our scope is little uh, is focused on the material supply. Okay. Um, and you mentioned this earlier, but uh, there's another question. Where are your products products sourced from? Yep. Uh, we make our products uh, in the United States, uh, Canada, uh, Mexico, uh, South Korea, India, uh, and around the world. Um, and you mentioned those, those are all, everything is TAA, BAA, or uh, FT, FTA compliant, right? As, uh, as required. All right. Can you help us with product availability for emergency preparation? I know the answer to that too. Yeah, absolutely. If, um, we certainly do that with a lot of the utilities around the country that are looking for just information about what's available uh, and what are the specifications and here's what we're looking for. So we'll be happy to share with that information with anybody that would be looking for that type of data. And Mark is talking about my, my Key West mug. Yes, it is mile zero. If you haven't been to Key West, killer place, great sunsets, just saying, uh, all, all those kind of things. And if you're going there, if you're close enough, you got to go to Big Pine Key and go to No Name Pub. If you've never been there, great pizza. And they have like $150,000 stapled to the wall. You can color bills and things like that. Crazy. Anyhow, so yes, that is my Key West mug. And, um, and then, so a follow-up to the other question, what happens when products are not available? How do you deal with that? Yeah, our, um, if the products are not available, our lead times average between six to eight weeks, depending on what the specification would be. Um, some of the more uh, technical and products like an underground high voltage product may take a little bit more time because those are more customized in manufacturing, but uh, generally we're at a you know 60 to 75 day horizon. Awesome. Great, great. Well, that's that's what I have for the questions that are coming. If you, if you want to raise your hand, we can include you. We can do the dialogue if you'd like, but otherwise we'll go ahead and move on to what I love the most about this is staying out of hot water because we want to keep, we do not want you to wind up on CNN because things are not happening the way they should. Right, Josh? Absolutely. And, and we do see that happen from time to time, especially in emergencies. So leverage the industry experts. Josh Faree, my favorite four-letter word, he'll help you. He, he's got all that stuff with the 30,000 plus things all mapped out. He can help you get there. Follow the best practices of what works. And I love your history, both all the way back through Sandy. That was pretty crazy with Sandy, right? That was a crazy time. Um, and then Puerto Rico handed us some some newer newer problems and issues that, that turn into best practices that you know of and you can help agencies with as well. Um, and, other, and other folks, too, is... is you know, engaging the industry experts. Josh is one of them. There's plenty of other folks too that you can reach out to, but when it comes to power, that, that's why we're doing this is just, power was a huge issue, especially in Puerto Rico. Still is, by the way, still is, by the way. Um, so following best practices, embracing flexibility. Uh, when it comes to, especially with wiring, like you said, you there are different solutions that will meet those needs and the modernization of those and standardizing those during the modernization process too and leveraging the emergency to modernize the infrastructure if you're going to have to replace it you might as well upgrade it 
Might as well upgrade it. And that helps you meet the executive orders and initiatives that are coming down and make sure you're validating the fact that it is BAA and TAA compliance compliant. And you handle that, right, Josh? I do. So you'll let you let everybody know if there's waivers that are necessary. Sometimes you need them. We got a ton of them that happened this last time with the PPE equipment and things like that, where there are waivers that are required. But you do your best to be able to have that already uh, beforehand, so that you don't have to even have any waivers, right? And if you would like to comment or com uh, or uh, to purchase from. Uh, American Wire Group, also known as AWG. I love that since that's part of your world, AWG. Uh, small business, Dunn's numbers right there, cage code. And as you mentioned earlier, Josh, you have an Army Corps of Engineers BPA that you can leverage. And if you need any other socioeconomic set aside, there you have partners that you can work through, right? Correct. Which also include installers that you know, because you're doing that all the time. Yep. All the major EPCs around the country. That Excellent. Perfect. So real quick, you will get a recap email next week, which, which will include the briefing presentation that you're looking at right now, as well, the PowerPoint, uh, as well as the supporting documents, everything that we've been talking about, AWG capabilities, and a link to the video. So if you want to watch it over and over and over again, you can and submit it to uh, the, the awards process. No, I'm just kidding. Just use it for what you want, and we appreciate you guys being here. And uh, and and we we really want to thank you. We know you have plenty of other things to do. Hopefully, this was was uh, good for what you're looking to do for enhancing your power and uh, and upgrading your power. And Josh, I just cannot imagine what's rattling up in your head, and especially when you start seeing clams and oysters and things like that. Thanks, Dave. Conk shells, apparently. Thanks to everybody for joining. That was awesome. Well, thanks a lot. We we do appreciate it. We did get you guys out here on time, three minutes before on time. So we want to make sure we're respectful of your time. Thank you for joining. If you have any questions at all, Josh is there. You can email them. If you need anything from me from Gov, Gov Brief, you can certainly email us here. and We'll be able to help you with that. But otherwise, please leverage, leverage, leverage the, the knowledge and wisdom that, that folks like Josh have, and you can reach out to them. Thanks again for joining us. We will see you next time. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.